greeted tonight in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for his faithfulness and his love. Let us go to the word of God in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We start reading from verse 14 until the end. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 until the end. I'm reading the NIV. It says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Speak, O God, we are listening in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall hear the word of God tonight under the topic that says, Separate yourself from them. Or come out from them. Praise the Lord. As human beings, we, we live in this world, obviously, amongst people. And as we live amongst people, we then tend to develop relationships with people that we live with. Whether it's in our families or in our workplaces or in, in institutions where we attend our studies, Wherever we may be, even here at church, we develop relationships and because we live amongst people. And because of that, there are times where these people that we live amongst, they tend to make us do things that God is not happy with. Praise the Lord. And as we live amongst these people, they have their own tendencies whereby when we spend more time with them, we find ourselves following whatever that they are also doing. And many a times you'll find that God is not happy because now we are then conforming to whatever that they are doing. We are following their practices and the things that they do which do not please God. Jesus Christ tonight is saying to us as a church, as individuals, that we need to learn to separate from them, to come out from them. The scripture that we read, it says we must come out from them and separate ourselves. And we must not touch any unclean thing. And the moment we do that, there is a promise that God gives us. He says, I will be a father to you. Praise the Lord. And he says, you'll be my sons and daughters. The only thing that you need to do is to separate yourself. You need to be separated. You cannot be amongst all these people that are doing things that I'm not happy with. There is a time in life where God wants to bless a person. And when God wants to bless you, God cannot just bless you anywhere and anyhow. But he needs you to be in a special place or in a certain place or in a certain area so that he is able to bless you. Because he cannot just bless you anywhere or somewhere else. Now, most of the time, what happens is, because we grew up in families, and we grew up in our hometowns, wherever they, we grew up from, some of us are still attached to those places or those areas where we grew up from. And many a times you will see many of us, not that it is wrong when it is holiday times, we go back to our hometowns because that is where we are born, that's where we grew up, that's where most of our relatives are. We are just here because of work. It's not because we, we were born here. When God wants to bless someone, there is a time when God will speak to you and say, I need you to move from where you are 
to somewhere else because that is where your blessing is. That is where you will find your blessing. Many a times as human beings, we find ourselves not in a position or not being blessed, so we think. And we need to check whether we're in the right place where God wants us to be. And the reason is that the reason for us to go to these places, like I said, it's because our relatives are there. Most of our family members are there. And it's not like we should stop visiting them or going to them. Praise Jesus Christ. In the word of God, we re read of a man or we learn of a man whom God said, for me to be able to bless this one, he needs to get out from this environment where he is in. And his name is Abraham. And when we read the word of God in the book of Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 5, it, it speaks of what God says to him, or what God said to him at that time. He said, the Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Praise the Lord. This is a very interesting story because in the beginning of this chapter, God speaks to one man and he says, you must come out of your your country, your father's house, from your people, your household, leave this place to a place that I will show you. Praise the Lord. And, and he continues in the word of God. He says, once you are out of this place, this is what I will do to you, or this is what I will do for you. I will make you into a great nation. But as long as you are still in Haran, in your father's household, in your country, amongst your people, I cannot bless you. I cannot make you into a great nation. It is only when you come out of that nation, of your hometown, then I will bless you. I will then make you into a great nation. Praise the Lord. Now, there is something I believe that Abram did. Because for you to live where you were born, the only place that you have known, it takes a very big decision for you to make. It's a very big decision. Therefore, it means even with us as children of God, when we have to separate ourselves, it is a decision that we need to make. It is a great decision. It's not something that you can think about right now and say, I'm separating myself right now, this very moment. It takes a big decision to make that now I am separating myself. Yes, there will still be my family. Yes, there will still be my people. But I need to separate myself for God to be able to bless me. Praise the Lord. And the word of God continues. There is something that I love. If you continue in the next chapter of the same scripture. Now, Abram, when he left, the Bible says he took Lot, his wife, and everyone else that, and every possession that they had accumulated. And along the way, in chapter 13, along the way, the headsmen of Lot and Abram begin to fight. And as they are fighting, as I was reading the word of God, I thought that Indeed, they, they had to fight. Lot was not amongst the people that were invited, that were told to come out. Abram was the one that was told that you need to come out of this place. And the reason why you need to come out is because you must leave all these people. And when they started to, to fight, Abram said, okay, it's, it's, it's okay. Look, whichever way you, you choose to go to, if you choose to go to the left, I'll go to the right. Because I believe that Abram believed God that whatever God said he will do for me, he will do. Whichever way I go, he will still be with me. So 
I better do this man a favor and give him the opportunity to choose first. And indeed, the Bible says he chose the wonderful plains of that area because he saw that the land was well watered. And that is what he went for. Because children of God, the people that are surrounding us, they are people that even when they see that you are following what God is telling you to do or doing what God says you must do, they will still want to choose material things. They will still want to choose what they see will work for them. Praise the Lord. They will not understand the position where you are at as a child of God that has been called by God himself because God wants to bless you. When God wants to bless you, he will tell you to go to places where you never thought of going there. Now, what happens next is, in verse 14 of chapter 13, the Lord said to Abram, after Lord had parted from him. This is after Lord had parted from him. He says, look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west, all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. Praise the Lord. Lot has taken his share, and because Abram believed God, that this God that took me out of my country is the same God that is going to bless me. He said, I will only bless you if you leave this place. That is why he gave Lot the opportunity to choose the fattest land, the fertile land, and he did. And God says, after they have parted with Lot, he says, now look, this is what I'm giving to you. All this land that you see, east, west, north, south, I'm giving it to you. Walk around through it because now it belongs to you. Praise the Lord. Today we have many people that are failing to receive what belongs to them because of where they are. They cannot receive and they think that this God is not hearing them. They think that this God, he has his own favorites. God does not have his own favorites. God wants you to be where he wants you to be so that he's able to bless you. Praise the Lord. But if you are in a place where God cannot even bless you, then you will not be able to receive. There are many things a person will receive if he can live where God, when God tells him to do so. If it is time for you to go to where God says, this is where I want you to be because this is where your blessing is, listen to God and do that. Do not go because you see people going. You have not heard what God has said to them. You'll become like Lot. And you'll find yourself in Sodom and Gomorrah. You better wait unto the Lord. Wait upon the Lord and hear what God is saying to you. Because when God says, you can go. When God says, this is where I will bless you. Stay there. Praise Jesus. Don't see people moving out and in and out and you get confused. You must not be confused about this thing. Because as much as God is saying you must separate yourself, you must know where God wants you to be. You must not be confused. Many people are staying in their families because they fear to go where God wants them to go. They are afraid. The fear of the unknown. The word of God where we read here in the book of Genesis, Abraham did not even ask God, where am I going to? He trusted what God said to him, go to a land that I will show you. Because that is where your blessing is. Now, many of us, God has told us that you need to move from your family. Move away and go to that area because that is where your blessing is. But we are afraid to go. Because what about our families? What about our relatives? What about this and that? We count so many things. There is a time a person must move out of the crowd. Praise the Lord. The crowd that you find yourself in, it's time to move out of it. Because many a times the things that they say in that crowd, they don't please God. And you find yourself teaming up with the crowd. If we go back to the key scripture that we read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible says, how can light be associated with darkness? How is it possible? It is not possible. 
it says we must not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness have with wickedness? What do they have in common? If you are a child of the light, you cannot walk in darkness. You need to separate yourself. The reason why we cannot separate ourselves to these days is because we are afraid of people. They will know that we are children of God. We are Christians. If you are a Christian, then you are called by certain names. And you don't want to be called by that name. You are ashamed of Jesus Christ. You cannot proclaim Jesus in front of people. Let me tell you something. This issue of separating yourself did not start here and now. It started long ago. And we need to learn from our master when he separated himself. The Bible says he would often separate himself from his very own disciples to go to a separate place to pray. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ knew that there is a secret in doing that because when I separate myself, that is when I will receive even more power, more impartation from the Father. He separated himself from his disciples. The disciples that he ministered with, wherever he was going to, the disciples were there. They saw the miracles he performed. But he did not want to be mingled in their thoughts because they had so many questions, their thoughts would be distorted at some point. That is why Jesus Christ is saying to us tonight, you must learn from me as your master. Separate yourself. Praise the Lord. There was one servant of God here who said, it is good to have a prayer partner. But even when you agree that we shall be fasting for seven days or 14 days, whatever days, you will find that you are the only one who's going through the fasting. Your partner is not there. You must learn to separate yourself. That even when I can have a prayer partner, but I need to separate myself just to be with the Lord. Do not rely on somebody else. Learn to rely on the master himself. Learn to rely on Jesus Christ. When you separate yourself and spend time with him in his word, in prayer, then the more you will receive from him. Praise the Lord. I know we, we come to the services many times. We come to prayer meetings. But do you get time to separate yourself just to be alone with the Lord Jesus? Just the two of you. And tell him everything that you want to tell him. And say everything that you want to say to him. Because that is where he will pour out to you. Even when Jesus Christ was faith with Gethsemane, the first thing that he did was he told his disciples, stay here. I'm going over there to pray. Because he knew that whatever I'm going to face now, I cannot face it with a crowd. There are certain moments, there are times, child of God, where you need to separate yourself. Because whatever you are going through, it's not the whole crowd that is going through it. You need to separate yourself so that God can empower you. So that he can give you the strength to go through whatever you are going through. Because the moment you sit down, you sit with people that are going to say things that are going to bring you down even more. You need to separate yourself. When you do that, it's not because you, you are a better off person. But it's because you want a better relationship with God the Father. When you separate yourself. Jesus says, come out from them. Separate yourselves. Then I will be your father. I will be able to be your father because when I am your father and you are my children, whatever I tell you to do, you will do it. But if you don't separate yourselves from all these things, all these people, all this noise, I can't be a father to you. Because whatever I tell you to do, you will then come back and say and try and reason with me as your father. He says, if you separate yourself from all this noise, you separate yourself from all these people, then I will be a father to you. Whatever I tell you, you will do. You will be a child. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 5, 16, that is what Jesus Christ did. He often withdrew to a lonely place. Not because he did not want to talk to his disciples. Not because he had nothing to say to his disciples. 
but because he saw the need of separating himself now and then. The Bible says often, he often withdrew. Now and then he would withdraw from his disciples to a lonely place, a secluded place where he will communicate with the Father and receive from the Father. If you cannot withdraw yourself, if you cannot separate yourself, you cannot receive from the Father. You will find yourself still in one place. That is why the word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, if I'm not mistaken, it speaks of when you pray, you go to your room and you close the door. That is a, a lonely place, a secluded place. You go to your room, you close the door. It's specific. You don't just go into the room and start praying. You close the door so that you are alone with the Father, so that no one disturbs you. That is your moment with the Father. That is when you separate yourself. When do you separate yourself? Because you are always at work, even when you come back at home. The children are there, and most of all, the television is there. When do you separate yourself? Because God wants to speak to you. God wants to spend time with you. But he can't reach you because you are so clouded with so many things around you. You need to have that time and separate yourself. You need to have that time with God alone. Let us learn from our master. The Bible says he often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. Without his disciples. Yes, he loved his disciples. Yes, he ministered with them wherever he went. But he saw the necessity and the importance that he needs to separate. That is why he is saying to us, we must separate from all these things. Because he did the same thing. So we must learn from him. Romans chapter 16 verse 17 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned, keep away from them. Keep away from such people. People who cause divisions and put obstacles on your way and who are contrary to the teachings that you have received, the teachings of fire, you have received the teachings of fire. And you are receiving the teachings of, of the five-point plan. And there are people who are causing divisions and are contrary to those teachings. The Bible says, keep away from them. Separate yourself. Because they are going to dilute you. You'll end up being confused. Not knowing whether you are going forward or you are coming back. If you know that this is where God has planted you, grow where God has planted you and you will receive a blessing. You see, this Christianity, this work of Christianity, it's not about a group thing. It's an individual decision. The moment you decided to receive Christ, we were not a group. Praise the Lord. But now when we are here, we want to do things as a group. I remember there was a prayer, there was a prayer that was made here that if you are still waiting for others, you are still waiting for others that maybe they will come so that you move forward. It is you that God is saying, separate yourself. Separate yourself. Don't look at who's doing what next to you because you'll get confused. You see someone going to the bathroom, going that way, you think the person is leaving the church. And you also use the other door and you want to leave. The next thing, the person is back and you are gone. Because you are looking at what other people are doing. You must learn to separate yourself. So that when you are separated from the crowd, God will speak to you. You'll be able to hear God speak to you. And when God says, I want you to stay here. Even when you don't see what is happening, stay. Praise the Lord. Even when your friends are leaving and you see that many people are going, Lord, is it not time for me to go also? No, stay. God has not said anything to you. 
He has not said anything. Praise the Lord. Allow them to go. God has spoken. That is if they heard correctly. But make sure that as for you, stay where you are and hear God speak. You can only hear God speak when you separate yourself and go to a lonely place and say, Lord, here I am, speak to me. God will speak. Praise the Lord. And God will empower you. If you read the word of God, every time Jesus Christ separated himself, there will be a miracle that will follow. Because God empowers him even the more. There is a word of God in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 1. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Praise the Lord. If you read verse 4, then there is a miracle that happened. The Bible says here, in more simpler terms, Jesus Christ was sharing the word to a crowd of people. Now, he realized that the people were so much that they were crowding towards him. And the Bible here says, he then saw boats which he moved into one of. He climbed on top and he said to the one of the owners, please push it backwards so that the people are left there alone and he moves towards the sea. Praise the Lord. He had to retreat, separate himself from the crowd. Praise the Lord. It's very important that you separate yourself. Because as much as you will think that people are surrounding you, are getting so close to you, you will think that they love you, they want to hear what you are saying. And yet they know what they are after. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ said, okay, these people are getting too close. Not that he did not love them. But he knew that I need to move a bit away from them. Because when you are separated and you are with the Lord, you will know what to do when and how. Jesus Christ moved from the crowd. There is a time, child of God, where you need to move from the crowd. Move away from that crowd. I know you want to feel like you belong to a crowd, you belong to a group of certain people, but you need to separate yourself. God wants to speak to you. He can't speak to you in that crowd. Remember, we were taught that the voice of the Holy Spirit is very still and it's soft. How will you hear in that crowd? Because the only voice that you will hear is the one that is loud. Separate yourself. God wants to speak to you. You are saying, I am not hearing God speak. Check where you are. You are in a very noisy place. That is why you cannot hear God speak. And it's not like he is quiet. He is not quiet. He is speaking. It's just that you can't hear because of the crowd that is surrounding you. Separate yourself. Move away from the crowd. Get a secluded place and talk to your father. Get a secluded place and talk to your father. Talk to your master. He wants to talk to you tonight. And one thing I know is Jesus Christ never brings a word if there is no need for it. That is one thing I've learned from him. He never says something because he's bored. He's not like you and me. He does not open his mouth because he has nothing to say. This word is here for you and me tonight, those who are here. God is saying to you and me tonight, we need to separate. There is something that God wants to say to us. And if we can give ourselves that time just to separate, I am telling you we shall be a different people because we shall do exactly what God wants us to do. 
2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 it says But mark this There will be terrible times in the last days People will be lovers of themselves lovers of money boastful proud abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy without love unforgiving slanderous without self control brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Praise the Lord. Have nothing to do with such people. It's the word of God. Have nothing to to do with such people. And if you look at this scripture very carefully, these are the very people that we want to associate with. Because these are the people that see themselves as, as people that have everything that they need in the world. And the Bible says, keep away from such people. These are the ones that you must avoid. Separate yourself from them. Come out from them. Because you'll end up being like them. And the Bible says they are having a form of godliness. And this form of godliness, it is to lure you to them. So that you will think, ah, no, these are also children of God. It's just that we don't fellowship with them. Or no, no, they are visitors. They are done even with the five-point plan. Because that's what they told you. Though you never saw them going through the five-point plan. They are having a form of godliness. The next thing, they lure you to their own things and you find yourself inside deep in trouble. And yet the Bible says it clearly. Keep away from them. Have nothing to do with such people. And I love the word of God, the way it puts it. It does not say have nothing to do with this kind of people. It's not a kind. It's such. You know, such... We refer to such as such things. Have nothing to do with such people. Separate yourself. Come out. I know coming out and separating is not an easy thing. It is not easy, I know. Because the moment you have to separate, you are separating from something that you are attached to. So when now Jesus Christ is saying you need to separate... It means Jesus has seen that we cannot separate. We are having a challenge of separating ourselves from these things. And that is why he can't speak to us. Even when we are in this grace, we write and we ask, and the responses come back. But because you are not separated, you feel that, no, this is not the answer I expected you still want to write again the same thing and you still resubmit. It's either there are two options that will come. It's either the answer will say already answered or you see Jesus does not change. It's either he will say already answered or he will say like I said. Whatever I told you before has not changed. I'm still saying it now. Like I said, it is still like that. And then because we think we are too wise, too wiser than Jesus Christ, we go back, we rephrase the question. And we forget that the same Jesus we are writing to, he is looking at you, he knows your thoughts. He knows your mind. The Bible says in Psalms 139, he knows the words you want to say even before you say them. He knows your thoughts even before you start thinking that now I'm thinking God knows already what we want to think. But we still want to go back and, and rephrase the question that, yeah, you see this way, I'll get him. You'll get who? <laughs> Jesus will get you because you will get the very same answer. 
you will be told this one has already been answered. So you are just wasting your time and your ink and your SMS. Just separate yourself and allow God to be a father to you. Praise the Lord. Once you allow him to be a father, then you will be a child. The reason why God is saying, then I will be a father, it's because he cannot be a father because some of us are thinking, how can you be a father to me when I'm also a father? I'm a father also in my own capacity. So how can you be a father to me? And that is because we have not separated. Once you separate with all these things, you will realize that I am a child before God. Whether you are a man and a chebe or you are a big man, you are a child before God. And God says, then I will be your father. And you will be my son. And you will be my daughter. No matter how big a woman you can be, you must be a daughter to God. So that he is able to speak to you as his child. If you are going to come to God with all your degrees and diplomas and honors to God, Forget. God will bring you to a level where you will never believe. Separate yourself and learn that you are a child before God. You are not an adult. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is saying to us tonight, we have nothing in common with the wickedness or with the world of darkness. There is nothing in common. That is why he is saying, you need to separate. Separate. If you were beans and you were mixed with rice, you need to do the separation, beans aside, rice aside. I understand we're not eating rice. But we are separating here. Separation is very important. Jesus Christ separated himself. And he would also still come back to them. And that, I believe, it made him to stay sane, knowing exactly why he came to this earth. It will make you sane in knowing exactly why you were saved. You will understand why Jesus Christ has brought you into this place. You will even stop to complain. Because you will understand the love of God that he has for you. Because you have separated yourself. Even when we come here together as a church. When you have your own time with God. When you separate yourself with God and you, you have that time with God. You will know exactly what God wants you to do. And you will never complain. Because God would have spoken to you. God would have said something to you that this is what needs to be done. God will open your eyes. Praise the Lord. Don't just come to church and warm the chair, listen to the word and go home. There is something that God has planned for you. But it's not just about you coming here, listen, then you go. There is more to that. There is more that God wants to do in you. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ wants us to separate. And I know that as Jesus was speaking through me, you know the things that you need to separate from. You know the things that take your time away from spending time with God. You know those very things that, Lord, I need to separate myself from these things. I need to get time and be with you. All these things, all my friends, whatever entertainment, whatever that keeps you from spending time with God, those are the things you need to separate from. Because they don't give you enough time to be with God. And they make you to be confused. Every time when you come here, you are confused. Because it's like you see something new every time you come to this church. You were here yesterday, but today when you come, it's like you see something new. No, you are confused. 
if you separate yourself and get the time with God, God will speak to you. You will be in the same move with everyone. You will understand what is happening. Praise the Lord.